guest. He's part of a very popular and biggest Lao team in the DFW Metroplex here in Texas called Lao Nation. John, John Boy and Karen Boy, how are you guys doing? No, we're good. So I want to thank you guys for being here and I'm so excited to have you. So John, I see you're displayed on the social media as John Boy and Karen Boy. Is that is that you guys' stage name, Boy? No, B Boy is my Lao's name. Boy is your last name. Yeah, and then she just took it as her nickname, so <laughs> pretty much it's John Boy and Karen Boy. Karen Boy, yeah, okay. Yeah, but everybody thought it was her last name. It's not her last name. It's, it's my last play name. John Boy, I yeah. want to know, and Karen, I want to know more about Love Nation. I mean, I always see it every year. So I want to know more about Low Nation. Are you guys are you guys the founder of Low Nation? Yes. He's yeah. the founder. Well, I'm He's the, the founder. Yeah, I'm the founder. founder. When when I was just sitting there one day, just like want to do something for the community, babe. Like let's. It's pretty much you know how older people they make summer mm -hmm. but then we wanted to make pretty much like our own summer comb, but for like it's like for a younger crowd. We always be sitting there thinking, trying to brainstorm, like how can we bring. Or, well, when we were just talking about it, it's just like um, we were talking like a regular conversation at home. But then we had friends that like, oh, every time we come to Texas, we like some people that don't know families that don't have families in Texas or they just want to come visit. But they're like so shy mm -hmm. and not open. Yeah. Right? And majority is some of them were like friends. And we have friends that didn't have friends and then have families that didn't have friends. <laughs> so we're like, okay, let's let's make a he's like, let's make a group and we'll just throw everybody all together. Yeah. And then it came together and it met like people nationwide meeting each other here and then actually know each other and then when they go back to their home they actually go visit each other. And then they start connecting on and on and on yeah. and on and on and on. And when now we know like, oh, at first, we started in Texas. Then we're like, oh, well, let's test it out. We went to yeah, Tennessee. Yeah, we, we went to Tennessee to promote it. And it just, a lot of people didn't understand the meaning behind it. They just thought, oh, they thought we were a clothing brand, but we're not a clothing brand. We're actually like a community group based in Dallas, Texas. Yeah. And then I try to explain that to people just because we make merches to just promote our group. You guys are in the community, just helping in the Lao community. Yeah, we, yeah. we do more than just the community because there's a, like we help people that have missing families from yeah. different states. And then, come on, one Facebook yeah, group we, can we, find yeah. a missing person in like less than a week. Okay, or so it's I, like, you know, like we do, yeah. a, they do a lot of stuff in there. It's not just, it's not just community in Texas. It's like all over nationwide. Yeah, we try to, because we did, we, we did the flooding too, work for yeah. Atapu. When that time we, we directly sent money mm -hmm. from our friend. Because uh, our friend yeah. was already in uh, Laos, yeah. already on vacation. And we're like, hey, Cause, cause it we, happened. Yeah, the cause, flood happened. It just like, oh, we didn't think about, oh, we're going to send money. To, yeah, because we, we just gathered. The reason why friends. we did, the, did it that way is because we wanted the money to, like, let's say when you went and visit Laos, right? Mm -hmm. You was like, hey, you know, Myra's out there. Let's just send her the money directly so she could directly give it to the people there. Because we don't know what these other organizations going to do with it. As long as we reached somebody, took that money and gave them food or what, whatever in person, and we seen it with our friends videos and photos that's what made us happy because mm -hmm. we directly connected with the community instead of okay we gotta wait what this charity is going to do you know nothing's wrong with that going through that way is the right way too but we we connected with the people more that way we gotta you know see them on facebook live saying giving shout outs to us and it, it was a friend with Sai, I say yeah. that did it. Yeah, from Tennessee, Murfreesboro. Mm -hmm. Shout out to them for they got their own parade team out there too. Sal Makmao, Bao Makmoan. Yeah, that's our little yeah, that, that's like team. Our, our second team. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. that that I shows us you know love when we go out there to Tennessee. It's like they're our second family. From I yeah. I never knew that Lao Nation did all of that as far as searching family and reconnecting families together. I didn't know about that. Yeah. This is not something that we advertise. We mm -hmm. if you're gonna do something, you do it. Out of the heart. That's what we always we taught each other. To, like, why you have to advertise yourself? Oh, I'm going to feed this homeless man. Mm -hmm. yeah, for what? So it, people can just it, say, oh, they're just doing it for show. No, yeah. we do it for our heart. And we don't let go. Hey, you got to pay me $10 to feed this homeless man. We don't do that. We do everything from our heart. Everything, every 
dollar that we get is from ourself, mm -hmm. our heart. Our it's like it's out of our own pocket. We never ask for charity or sponsors to do these, you know, community stuff. Like, was it that one year Thanksgiving? I just woke up one day. I said, "Hey, babe, you know it's Thanksgiving. Let's uh make some sack lunches, sandwiches, and stuff." Because we just drive around Dallas. We're like spontaneous. We feel bad, you know, like uh, what do you call it, the tent city. Mm -hmm. I just see them out there, like, damn, they must be hungry. They, it's cold. Let's just make. Uh, we just got our friends together. Hey, you guys down to do this? And they're like, sure, John. You know, let's do it. You know, and then I said, okay, I'll, we went spent almost like what thousand dollars on chips sandwiches and stuff we just sacked it up all together on like what was Her, thanksgiving, we thanksgiving came, morning like, laid it out on yeah. the table and started assembling everybody yeah. assemble everything and, and then everything. we just drove around downtown around this area can i ask you guys why why do you guys opt out on not seeking help i mean try to do fundraisers so you guys can get funds because we had a lot of critics that would critic us because just because who i am from where i came from and i'm not that that standard you know to doubts vote. like people yeah. doubt us like when we yeah. first started like <clears throat> our parents weren't even supportive yeah, of it's, us it's like beginning. how we're talking about how the older generation they is. weren't supportive like you guys yeah. can't do it you can't do it like you can't put your money yeah. together and just get it done that's what they told us we can't do it so i like i didn't go out there and to do meet the you know the, the temple people like i didn't go hey i'm so and so's daughter yeah it's like you know, i didn't yeah. i didn't say that they didn't know who i was in the beginning like when we started saginaw i went to the the head of the monk like hey can we join the team he's like sure blah 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 they didn't know who i was i didn't say hey you know because normally lots of people they were like oh Pa jump and pie, man jump and pie, jump out the side, you know? Yes. They always ask the same question. Like, who's your parents? Where are you from? Where you go? Where, you know? So, like the older just, generation, they, they they, like, like when we spoke that. about, they, they make us feel uncomfortable when we would, you know, try to promote ourselves in the community. They would be like, who's your parents? This, it's, they, they don't realize that the questions they ask is kind of rude. It's like if I said in English to a random American girl or something, who's your parents? Who's your mom? Who's your dad? It's like, yo, it's like, it's, and you know, back up, you know, it's status. <laughs> yeah, too. it's status too in the community. It's like in the if, community. If, if your family ain't really educated or got money or known, and then you happen to just yeah. try to do something, they like to do to, or they like to down. Oh, don't that family this and that. Yeah. I'm sorry that you know, or you know, there's always generation generational change, right? So we trying to break that chain. But sometimes you can't make that change if you got these older generation critiquing you, like criticizing you. It's hard, and we got to the point where you know what we can just do this ourselves. We can do this ourselves and prove to them that we don't need their funds, don't need their help. If they don't want to, you know, approve us or you know, like like what we doing, who cares? We can still do it, and then that's what kept us going because of our what. Proving it to them, just try, trying to prove a point. Yeah, prove a point, and then it, it just drove us, drove drove us, drove us to to the point where we just kept on doing it, doing it, doing it, and then we got to the point where it's like, okay, where are we going now? And like, and everybody's like, the the parents <clears throat> thought it was it was about money, right? Yeah, that, that's what it, the they, whole time everything is about money. If we wanted to start it about money, we would have done that in the beginning. We would have went a different route and just sold merch sold clothing where we made but it wasn't about that it was about we trying to keep our culture and giving going that. and show the little kids hey the younger kids are you know making their own stuff you know instead of i understand like i heard like a lot of summer comb is just dying Dial, out dying yeah out it's, because it's sad. they're getting old they're getting old and then our generation we we have you know insurance you know, life insurance policy, yes. health care, you know, better than what the older generations understand because they do some coma to help each other out when there's a funeral, right? It's like, it's a, what, a, a immediate, immediate, immediate money, immediate money to help. Yes. But our younger, gen our age group, we don't need that because we know, oh, we invested in this, invested in that, mm -hmm. but our older parents generation don't know about mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us what year do you guys remember what year Lao Nation was established? It's about 2013 was the year, right? But then we didn't really get official. Okay. We just, okay, we can do this or not do it. Then 2015, that's when we planned. Like, you know what? We need to, what's the point of, you know, creating this? 
all this you know hype and stuff and then we're not going out there to do it let's do it you know and then that's when we start doing little community stuff helping our friends family cousins out and then that's when we finally let's do a float when you guys say we did you did you guys have a group of people it was friends and family yeah it was friends and family, friends and, family. and then did they still with us they just all around spread out you know dfw and then some you know when you get bigger or when you move in advance, some won't see the vision we see and we won't see eye to eye. People split off, do their own thing. That's what we we endured a lot, you know. Okay. We couldn't keep friends that wasn't really, they didn't, that wasn't for the cause. So you can't really pull everybody in the boat with you that want to go. Some will, you know, go their own way and some will come with you. That's what we through what one uh, through the decades of us doing this, we lost a lot of friends and we gained a lot of friends. But you know that's part of uh, growing up and part of life, right? Right, you and mean, we learned yeah. a lot along the way too. Yes. Yeah. What about the struggles? The struggles, the <clears throat> difficulties, the challenges that you guys face as from 2013, 14, 15, and then now. What are our, all of the struggles and difficulties and challenges? I know people. They never see behind the scene what's going on with Loud Nation. They only see what what people are doing on the floats and just partying, right? Yeah. Like they never see what you have to endure, what you have to face, the finances, things in, in, of, of that nature. Can you tell us more about that, if you can share any details that you, you're comfortable with? Well, you know, it's like uh, we talk about a lot. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't see, you know, like the finance part. They don't understand. Like sometimes, we, like our first year we finally got sponsors, people thought, oh, you know, when they hear the word sponsors, they think we're getting big corporate, you know, paychecks <laughs> here. You know, I'm like, dude, we only getting $100, $200. It's like gen generous donation. You know, when you go to a loud house, funeral, they put in the song, see, they've done house, they've done hooks, they've done, and we take it, you know, and then we're nice enough to promote them. But like we spoke about earlier, a lot of people don't understand when we marketing you, when you do it the American way, you pay more than to them than you know how we promote. We just take, okay, $100, we'll put your name on our banner. But if you go to Walmart or something, hey, can you guys promote my business? They can be like, you better write up a $100,000 check, buddy. And we'll promote you all over Walmart. But yeah, we endured a lot of that where people just think, oh, we just, Oh, we got money, this and that. Like we had to come out of our own pocket, you know, like just scrunching, you know, just to make things happen. And it just, it was horrible, right? Yeah, just, yeah. dipped in our 401k, yeah, just, just, just to, just, just to, just to make things do, happen, yeah, you know, just to make it happen. Yeah. People don't see that. People don't see the struggles that you guys had to go through as far as pulling out your 401k. Did you guys ever argued as a couple like, oh, we should never have done this. This is every couple fault. argue. Yes. Every couple argue. We, just, just, we just have one thing is communication. Yeah. That's one thing it has to, even you argue at the end of the day, we still have to communicate. You can't just go, hey, I'm going to go to sleep. Yes. Yeah, and we got to finish what we're talking about, get it over with, and it's a new day. I'm just so intrigued and just so amazed by the love that you have for Long Nation. I mean, you guys took out your 401k just to yeah keep this going. Just to keep it going. Then a lot of our friends and stuff. It's like what they said, "Bumi bun kun." They will come and you know just do what they want to do. Think this is just a party, and then when we do community stuff, we want to bring them in. Besides that float New Year stuff, we try to reach out to get people to do it with us. They're like, nah, we don't want to do it. Okay, but when it comes to drinking and partying, you guys want to do all that with us. But when it comes to like doing community stuff, you guys are not really into it. So I was like, what is it? Are you guys with us just for the drinking, partying? We all could do that, but then I just want to reach out to people like, hey, sometimes we got to slow down a little bit and then we could do the party and then we could do stuff for a community too. We could balance it out if we want to keep on doing it. But sometimes people don't understand that, right? They're like, oh, why can't you have to host another party? Why don't you have to do, um, a, was it a, a gala style or whatever yeah, they want party? To... And then it, I mean, we can throw parties if we want to throw yeah, parties. Yeah, but then they got to have a but purpose. Then it's like, what's the purpose? Yeah, we got to have a purpose while we're doing it. And then sometimes I'll come up with a, a lot of ideas. Let's do it, you know, maybe we could give the money back to, you know, seniors. Like how I talk about, like, Christmas, maybe we could work with, you know, last, last month, summer, home, like every Lao person like that wants to could give gifts to the old Lao seniors and stuff. 
that's the purpose, you know. But we can't just have host a party and don't have a purpose. And I understand some people with their purpose is money, you can make money. But then my goal is not to make money. That's what I tell people, and then they kind of be like, oh, I don't want to do it. Then they get mad and don't want to talk to me no more, or don't want to, you know, partner up with me because that's not my goal. <laughs> they just wanted to use me to make money. So, you know, and then I just move on and I understand everybody want to make money, you know, we got to probably need it to fund stuff. But sometimes if you can just be, if you be direct with me that you want to do this show, a party, I'll prove it. But then if you come around like, oh, you know, let's, maybe we could do this fundraiser, do this charity, but it got to be really, really transparent. That's the, what I mean, like if they want to do it. You're only doing this, Lao Nation's only doing this just for the cause of preserving the culture. Is yes. that correct? Yeah. As far as making money or trying to make money off yeah. of it, that's not what you guys want. No. Mm -hmm. Because we give back majority of the time. Like whatever if we're in Rockwall, <clears throat> we give back to the Rockwall Temple. Yeah, like every time we, we give back yeah. every time when we get a they like they started doing announcements for the best parade, the best float, you know, I understand like when we in Rockwall we get we everybody gets a parade and get judged and they give us you know like prize money yeah. instead of get, giving it to us we were like hey our team's giving it right back because we don't we don't want to take it yeah, we, we want to give we back. just don't feel feel right we, we, we did enough for what we did with our our age group where we went out there we still repping our culture you know culture that's why the name became Lao Nation it's like why we want to rep our own fancy summer home name, our own neighborhood, our own city. We just said, you know what, we're just gonna do it for Kalao and say Lao Nation. That's how the name just So who came up with the name? <laughs> Pretty <laughs> me. Yeah, I just like, yeah, I was just sitting there, you know, I, I observed the community, you know. I'm not, you know, knocking on nobody. Everybody, you know, have their own group, their own whatever they want to choose the name as. But me, I just felt like, hey, you know, I'm Kalao and you know what, you know, I don't need no to rep myself, I could call it, you know, John's group, you know, whatever, but I was like, I'm gonna just do it, you know, if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it for my whole Lao Nation. That's the whole name, you know, it means everybody. We know that social media, the social media platform is a great way to advertise your company. Mm -hmm. Can you take us to, to 2013, 14, 15, and then moving forward? How was it like as far as advertising, just spreading the word about Lao Nation? How did you, how did you guys get to this this massive of a group we don't know when we first started uh was 297 yeah, when we first started it was it was like really really family and friends it's just us in there joking around talking this and that then you know more friends add their friends in more friends add their friends in and then it started getting but it was at the beginning it was still close Remember? Yeah, it was it was a closed group. We were always a private group. Private we, group. We, we didn't add anybody. Yeah, we just didn't add. We hand selected each person that came in all the way until. Like uh, we, this, still, this, we still we still we still do it, but it, before it got tiring hand selecting. You know, it's like you got thousand people on social media just sitting there making sure that they answer every question. It just got old to me to the point where I just said, you know what, I'm gonna just make it where anybody could approve members. Well, back then we didn't really have social media yes. as hardcore as as it is now. That's so, where it, yeah. So you're saying 2015, you guys became official, like going out to the parade. Yeah, that that's when we blew up too. Yeah, our group. That's it. It, it blew up. It blew up, uh, and you know, semi blew up, and then as we kept doing this community stuff and social media stuff because we were promote on there too. It just, the group just slowly started growing and growing and growing and then more people caught on, wanted to get on, like different, you know, like merch brands and yeah. festivals, whatever. They all just want to get on there and promote their stuff. And then when they grew, when they got big and left, they did their thing, wasn't mad. Then it just kept on growing because to this day, we still got people in there that, that, you know, small, you know, brands and stuff that would try to promote themselves. And there'd be people, you know, just little kids and stuff i see that and and i'm no hater you know i i will have people come to me hey john wh why are you letting them doing this doing that you should you know I, i'm i'm for my community like i said you know i love to see my own kalau mm -hmm. doing it you know like making it like singers rappers and stuff they'd be on there trying to promote their music they might not get no likes no views but hey they promoted it 
And in, in the Low Nation group. Yeah, we get, we get yeah. so many stuff, like so many people, like popular artists and stuff in the Lao community, they're in the group too, yeah. From all kinds of background. We got doctors, lawyers, rappers, singers. It's, 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 it's hard to keep up because right now we got 11.6 members. People always remember their first kiss, first love. Do you guys remember your first sponsors? Or very first sponsors, CBS Pharmacy, yeah. Pharmacist. Pharmacist, my bad. I mean, your pharmacist. Yes, yeah. all my, well, the thing is, I had to pitch my pharmacist, the, all that I work for. I like, because you can't ask CVS, because CVS, we have to go through steps, right, before we do anything. But I asked my coworkers, which are pharmacists, right, my big bosses. So I asked them, hey, you know, my other half is trying to start a parade team and he needs money, but I don't really have that kind of money, yeah. you know, and then they're like, so give me a, they're like, tell me. And then I was like trying to explain to them, like, what do we do? And what's it going to go towards? And then the pharmacists, some pharmacists, they're like easygoing, you know, because they love me so much because I work so hard at my company that they're like, you know, like some they're just mm. pretty much like a bunch of group of my uh, co-workers put, putting their money together to give to me to give it to him yeah that, that was them and then a lot of big part of it was friends and family mm -hmm. I mean how did you feel I was so overwhelmed because oh, yeah. it's, it's, I didn't know yeah. that I felt that much love from all the pharmacists but that that they no, no longer work for CVS anymore because yeah. they go to different right. pharmacies but I, I didn't I felt so much love from them, you know, like, hey, go for it. They told me, go for it. Did you ever invite them to come to the float and hang out or they, participate they, in the uh, Well, actually, they, they, they're they sideliners. So basically, some of them showed up. I was surprised. And they're like, no, you guys are too wild. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're like, too wild. You are party hard. And I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah, kind of. But I'm the only one. I'm the sober one. Yeah. I've had to be sober. I've been so like. I, I, don't, I don't know how she does it. She, she she doesn't drink. She doesn't party like that. But then she's doing this, you know, to and to watch other people, you know, just to enjoy themselves. You know, it's like they out here. Laos New Year is, is like. It's a culture fest, you know, just to celebrate Hot Nam Gun, this and that. Yeah. And she's just the one that's sober, just sits there and laughs. And so do you, water. do you pref do you consider yourself like the Lao Nation security guard? Pretty much. I yeah, like I'll be like, hey, don't do that. Don't touch. Oh, you're going to get run over. And I'm like, the whole time, yeah, like, she, she, she gets I'm, crazy I'm out it. there. Tell him to stop. Stop that. Tell him to stop getting on top of the truck. Tell him don't do that. Tell him. You know, stop, you know, drinking while they're driving. Yeah, I was like, you know, there's a lot of stuff that happens during New Year's and then but people she, she's concerned and worried, you know, sometimes. Yeah. Cause there's, there's a lot of people, you know, you're going to, if you're going to drive, you drive. Don't drink and drive. I want to talk about the sponsors again. I know we're going back to the subject. Do you, when you guys approach, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure you've had some people in mind. Yeah. Right? Some sponsors that you think that are maybe that will would probably most likely support you have you ever approached them and gave them the idea like hey can you guys promote Lao Nation can you guys be one of our sponsors and they rejected you yes yeah we we, we had a, um, a lot not, yeah we had a lot you know we ain't gonna mention no name or anything but it, it hurt me a lot where because I was like damn you know it's like we young you know a lot of people trying to do this and then they just it's like we felt you like you got dogged out like, like he he like in the beginning when we were trying to get sponsors he was shut down because when you no, know he took it personal no, let me, let me, i took it personal because all right you know when i went and asked lao business and stuff a lot of them turned turned me down it made me furiated so but then i couldn't take you know like they say don't ever take no take it as a next opportunity that's why i set my mindset to think i said okay and it, it hurt me the most because then it was like, you know what, let's go to Hip Thai. Let's see if she'll sponsor us. And this is a Vietnamese market. This is not a Laotian. It's a big Vietnamese market in DFW. Everybody heard of Hip Thai market. Mm -hmm. We went and approached and asked her and she sponsored us. It's always the people outside. Yes. Outside of like your family. It's always people that are non-blood, non-relatives. And yeah. she started. 
Yeah, she she went out there and the supported us. Yeah, it's, and you know, it's a, a lady, right? She's like over same age as her parents. She, and you know, she went out there to the temple and supported us. And you know, we just you know market her 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 supermarket for her. That's all we we asked. For, you know, for her to do was just to sponsor us and we'll give her that back. And then she just didn't. Okay, you know. No questions asked. We just, you know, explain in details what we want to do, what we're trying to do. And she didn't give us, you know, you know, bad feeling, none at all, right? She's like, okay, baby, we'll write, you know, check. Just let me you know where I know, I know. She knew already, you know, Lao's New Year and Walk Wall. She'd been there. Just boom, like that. But Kalao, you already, you've been seeing this event for almost 10, 20 years. Not all my Lao's people, like right? It's like that. I mean, Lao people, it's like that, but, you know. It, it just infuriates me. Majority, the percentage, thinks that way. And we need to change that mindset if we want to change in the future. And how can we, how can we change that? Do you have any ideas how we can, how we can do that? Uh, we got to be more open. And I think it, it's going to change because the way we've been raised in America, our mind is more open. We're not traumatized from war or we, we don't really compete against each other in this generation. I, I, I'm starting to, like how I mentioned earlier, I'm starting to see a lot of Lao restaurant popping up with the Lao name. And then it's easier for us to approach young Lao business owners. Hey, you guys want to sponsor us? And then they know the concept of what we're talking about. They, it don't come uh, with them judging us or asking us. They're like, yeah, you know, we know Saginaw. Like, yeah, we, we would love to do it. Put our name on there. For example, the other, uh, this is our, what, fourth or fifth year in when we went and asked Boone Bistro, Bistro mm -hmm. over in Fort Worth. Her, uh, is with, that a Thai, Thai restaurant? Or it's a Lao Thai Lao, Lao Boone Thai Bistro. Restaurant. Okay. It's the, the kids are, uh, what's it, their parents own? Hong, Hong Tong. Hong Tong. Oh, okay. Hong Tong Cafe, yeah. We, we asked him and then, uh, you know, he was just like, okay, let me ask my wife. And then he's like, yeah, sure, you know, let's do it. No ifs, ifs or ands. Right. How do you guys approach people, businesses and stuff? How do, do you guys send emails? Do you guys just call, walk <clears throat> to the facility? Um, Usually I'll do the talking. If I feel the vibe yes. with the owner, I'll, I'll talk myself, introduce what we're trying to do. And then we'll have our um, what sponsorship package mm -hmm. that we wrote up and we'll explain in every little detail what we're, we're doing and what's this for, what we're celebrating. And then we'll, we'll give them that, that letter just let them know what we're doing or then I'll just explain myself in words. I see that every year Lao Nation is getting bigger and bigger. It's just growing. At what year did you guys see the growth in your team? Probably... The Army year. Huh? The Army year. Oh, the Army year when we went the Army theme. Do you know what year that it was? It was 2017. We had the Army camel shirt. Okay. I think 16, 17, 18, 2018, yeah, 18. Before COVID, because yeah, COVID is 2020. Yeah, and then, yeah, COVID, it, it, that plays a big role in what we were doing, too. It killed our momentum. It, it killed our momentum because I look back, I was telling me and her, we were just having a brainstorm talking. I'm like, damn, babe, I was like 16, 2016, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. We were just going horror, horror with it. Like, let's do everything flow, community, food drive. And then COVID hit and, you know, everybody got to that slump where we, we can't do New Year's no more. And we made the shirt and everything like design, but everybody's like, I don't think nobody's doing nothing. I don't think uh, we even designed a shirt, right? We yeah. had, we had a, or it was a year of the rat. We had the, our theme and everything. We, we had like a 69. Yeah. <laughs> so like you a, guys just took a loss that year. We took a loss that year. We had to. 2020 we, took a loss. Yeah. When COVID hit. And then after that, it just kind of, we slumped like. We didn't even do a parade. Yeah. It, they had, the parade <clears throat> came back, but we didn't do the parade. Yeah. We, we, that year, we just walked around and sold our merch. So the, the next, you guys are referring to the next following year, the yeah. 2021 year. Because yeah. we, uh, and at the same time, we lost a lot of friends, right? A lot of supporters. Yeah, because COVID, that, we lost a lot of people too during that COVID. Was, that, was, that came and supported us every new year. It's like people that would, hey, John, let me get, you know, shirt. Every year, they already, you know, I already know who it is. Can you hit me up? What size they want? We lost, man, almost like, almost like 50, 100, 100 friends. That, yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, not just in the DFW, all around the United States that came and supported us that passed away from COVID. Yeah. yeah. 2018 was your highlight year, the Army year. Mm -hmm. Do you guys know how many people joined the team? 
Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure. Well, we had a video though. We had, we had like, no, we printed out 400 to 500 shirts that year. Yeah. And you guys sold all of them. Yeah. Yeah, we came home with what? Yeah, few, you know, we didn't say you probably a few, you know, like yeah. size that people don't wear, like. Yeah. But then usually, how I take care of those, I toss it out. I I give it to kids or whoever, right? Like, hey, here, take your shirt. I gave a little girl a shirt. She's like, huh, huh? <laughs> and her parents came and grabbed her, like, here, put on this shirt. And she's over there with the bunny ear. Like that, that was last year, right? The bunny yeah. ear. She's just looking at the shirt, admiring it because we made a little kid version. Yeah. So how do you guys come up with themes? It, it's all about out of my head, my imagination. So it's usually it's you, him? Yeah, I, I had themes or logos He's and stuff. He's more creative. Yeah, I, I would sit there, you know, with a, a sketch. Mm -hmm. I'm not an artist like that, but I, I know how to sketch what's... What, whatever I'm envisioning in my brain, I'll just... Okay, and then I'll just sit there sometimes and I'll just daydream. I'm a Pisces, that's why. I daydream a lot. So <laughs> I sit there and daydream. I'm like, mm, maybe if I... Like the Dragon Ball Z theme, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just sitting there. Okay, you're the you're the dragon. You're the dragon. I said, how about if um, I always want to do DBZ theme? We like not the traditional uh, Loud Parade teams. They just do T-shirt and that's it. I was like, hey, babe, let's do a DBZ theme. You know, I was like, uh, we can go bright orange. <laughs> we never go orange, uh, like bright colors. So finally this year, I was like, I'm going to go super bright. And then the orange came in my head. And I was like, should I do a, um, a Texas Longhorn theme? And I was like, nah, that, that don't look right. And then I said, oh, yeah, it's the year of the dragon. And it's orange, DBZ. <laughs> That's how the whole thing came. I said, okay. And then I just sit there and envision my logo. I was like, but how can I put that? And then I was like, let's do it like a Dragon Ball Z style. And then I told my artist, the one I, you know, Tay, I said, hey, um, I need you to make me this exact logo in Loud Nation. I had it all, you know, drawn up and stuff with, you know, showing him the sketch, what, what I'm talking about. And then I said, the dragon could be Shinron. And then he's like, okay, we did all that. And then the back, I was like, you know what? Make it like the back of like Goku. But instead of the, the lettering, of, you know, on the back of Goku, we can make it into look like a 24 with the cloud. And that's how that whole imagination thing came. That's crazy. I mean, I'm not going to lie, though. Every year, when I see you guys, when I'm in Saginaw, Lao New Year, during the parade, I would be on a different team. And every time when you guys pass by, I'm like, dang it, I'm in the wrong team again. <laughs> I don't know why I do this to myself, but I'm always, I mean, you guys are always lit, loud, yeah. and you guys are always fun. I always hear you guys, like, just, people just want to have fun, that's it. Yeah. I mean, I of course, everybody, but, I mean, I just feel like you guys have more, like, energy, you know? <laughs> like, I mean, the older people, they do have a lot of energies, too, right? But yeah. For some reason, I, I just feel like there's well, we more. we still, even though we're lit and stuff, we still have to keep it in rules. Yeah, we, we still try to respect the temple grounds and the yeah. rules. We, I think we're... Uh, the young team that we go report to the temple and that we will try to, you know, cater to their rules. They'll tell us and the will tell our team members, hey, you guys, we can have fun, get drunk and all this and that, but let's not go too far. Sometimes that's what the older, the elders ask and we'll respect that. Do you guys have like a, like a meeting before going to the parade? Do you, do you guys send an email or? I'll pronounce it on social media. And, oh, and, social and then media. when I'm there on the float, I'll tell my DJs, you know, Shout out to DJ Sam, DJ Paul, <laughs> and DJ Paul Wall. They're my main DJs now, you know, pretty much. The famous garage, what, that's where they party at. That's, you know, pretty much the headquarter where we go and have a little chit chat of everything that goes on. And then I'll let them know, hey, you guys, don't do this, don't do that. And because we get a lot of friends from different, you know, nationality that comes join us. We yes. get, you know, Latino, we get, you know, blacks, white. And then sometimes they don't know, so we have to let them know what we're celebrating so they don't get upset or they know what not to do. Right, right. And water water hitting each other on last New Year is not a, it's, somebody getting mad at you. Okay? It, it's considered it's, a blessing. Yes, yeah. you're getting blessed. Did you guys ever have one person or uh, uh, several people didn't know the custom and just like, oh, why are you guys throwing water at, at me for? Yeah, we, yeah. yeah we, we had somebody that came to the event one time where they were all dressed up, mm -hmm. like real nice. And tomorrow, like Gucci hat, Gucci head. Yeah, that person got real upset. Right. Because they got splashed. You should know it's a prey day. Why you can come all, you know, bougie looking. It's a day to have fun, just 
let loose. It's like Mardi Gras. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but we had that incident where we have to pull that person to the side and, hey, look, if you can, you know, if you can expect them not to hit you with shaving cream or getting wet, don't come. That's all we could tell you. Don't come at all. Do you guys consider Lao Nation to be a competitive team? No, we, we don't try to compete with anybody. We did this, you know, out of our own goodwill, and that's the way we're going to keep it going. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I see North Star Band, right? With Cindy, Cindy's team. Yes. The girls are always, their theme is always nice. I always see it with the costume and stuff like that. Do you guys ever feel you guys have to compete? I mean, you already said that. No. Yeah. No, it's just because we're used to, it's, if we're going to do something right, we want it to be perfect. Like, yeah. We want picture perfect. Yeah. It's like we, don't, we, don't, we, don't have, we don't try to compete like, oh, we're going to do this this year because they're doing it. We just stick to our theme. Like like I said, if it's DBC, hey, like this year I'm planning to dye my hair blonde and then go uh, <laughs> like Trunks Baby Blue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm going to tie it up. I'm just doing it. Then I told Joe and them, hey, you guys going to do it with me? I don't know who's going to do it with me, but... The other year, we ju I dressed up as but as a pig. Yeah. The pig year. The whole pig well, we have a yeah. We have we have themes that we like. Okay, it, whatever year it is, we it, we have a theme for it. Like one was it the year of. Uh, the, the monkey monkey year we did the monkey year we, did we monkey had tails. monkey tails because we still in the yeah. monkey you know the monkey year we had monkey tails and then we had what um, monkey the year of the pig they what pig right it's outside mm -hmm. so what did we do we dressed up as Lao farmers oh yeah we dressed up as uh, with the, you know the Lao farm outfits yes. we all had pabian and because uh, we're still keeping our culture right yeah mm -hmm. but right. we're still still in the what it was, was, it? It was the a farmer theme even, even our float we, we picked it as as a red it was like a burgundy red barn pretty much that's the concept of the float if nobody noticed but yeah yeah I don't think anybody knows it they it was, just more worried about you know just dancing and stuff but if you look at the float it's a red barn and we were dressed up like you know have poppy and like we in laos like you know riding you know the rice fields yeah <laughs> they were all going to the rice field yeah. and we like like this is your theme right dragon ball z so that's gonna be what orange and we're gonna all look like we're floating yeah on a cloud like, on yeah. a cloud that's awesome again you know when before I knew about Lao Nation, I just thought, you know, stereo, you know, just stereotype. Yeah, stereotype. I, we, we, had, we, we had a lot of that. People say, oh, you know, kum na kling, yes, dancers. I hear that. It, it, I hear that a lot and it hurts my heart because we we are not about that no more. We, we grew up, we all was like that when we were younger. Yes, I understand. Especially me being the forefront of the leader. That's the first thing we can assume. That's what, okay, for me, I'm like, you know, Lao Nation reminds me of an organized crime syndicate. That's what I think of Lao Nation, right? Yeah. But it's more of that, you know? Like yeah, it's Lao more Nation, of that. It's, you guys go out there and give everything to the yeah, community. And, and it's like, like I said, we, we try to give so much, but then we get, you know, like shed it on, you know, when we try to give, but then in the, like the community like i said they, they would frown on us and make you know stereotypes and i hear it too and i just laugh about it and it hurts my heart like oh you know they probably get all that money to fund their event and stuff doing illegal activities and stuff and it's not like we explain what we have to endure to just get everything going and then like our merch the reason why we sell our merch is whatever we make we put back into the group that's the only big reason why we have to do the merch part, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you guys put it back into the group, are you referring to buying water for the parade and mm -hmm. water, food, yeah. and making sure everybody's okay by the end? You know, at least at least we know, like, okay, at the end of the parade, everybody's going to be drunk. We at least have food for them to sober up because we don't want nobody going home drunk driving or anything like that. Right. Yeah, we always try to look out for make, making sure everybody is safe. But we, it's like we can't take care of everybody. It's so much people. So we just try to look out, reach as far as we could reach right. within right. people. Yeah. Going back throughout the entire year, have you guys ever kicked anybody amongst your team? Like kicked anybody off of the team? No, they just we, leave themselves. They leave themselves. We have felt you know fall out with people because just the way their attitude was their you know, disagreement like you said disagreement okay. yeah aren't then it just it's personal agreements but then they see that we you know 
we're the head of Lao Nation, so they would, you know, oh, I don't want to associate with them no more type of stuff like that, just because of that. And I'm like, why are you blaming the whole group for what you and me personally have? The majority of the time, it's something that they bring to themselves where I have to address with them. Like stuff like, let's say we have a New Year's, people get drunk and start fighting or want to pick fights with people. And, uh, you know, I'll address that person later on after New Year's. And after that, they feel some type of way and they don't want to miss with me no more. And I'm like, good, fine. I'm glad you took your, threw yourself in the trash. You know, the trash took itself out. Mm -hmm. much. Does Lao Nation have specific rules when you guys go out to the parade? I'm sure you announced that. We will try to keep it brief with people, but we know when we're dealing with a lot of people that's here to party. So, but we'll keep it brief with them and let them know what the rules are. But we, we're not going to instill it on them or like, you know, put fear. Enforce it, yeah. Enforce it because we're here to have fun. You really can't yeah. enforce yeah, adults, it. Yeah, yeah adults yeah. will be adults. Yeah. But I mean, I'm sure you probably give them the generic rules like, hey, it's a temple, like no showing a lot of cleavage or booty cheeks yeah. or something like that. Because a lot of people, they don't really know our custom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I believe our team, we never had that issue, right, with anybody showing anything. Because big reason is why. Because they'll pull us, like after yeah. the thing, they'll pull us. And hey, hey, we need a top. When you say yeah. pull, like who pull you guys? The the, the head of the, the temple. The, the, the yeah. judges and stuff. Judges, yeah. They pull us aside. Yeah. And what do they, they do? They say, you guys can't do that next year? Or are you guys going to be DQ, disqualified? They'll just year? remind us, hey, you know, this person, that person. And then we're like, okay, we'll go and tell them, take, you know, let them know, hey, chill out a little bit, go somewhere, you know. Leave the temple grounds, go to a house party. You know how Saginaw you know, is a lot of houses. Go down there, go eat somewhere in a booth, sit down, calm down. Because what that one year we had somebody that got on top of her uh, float and was twerking right in front of the temple and somebody came and grabbed me, hey, John boy, go get her Go get her off. And I walked over her, I said, hey, come down. She was treating the top, because we made a boom box. Yes. Yeah, and then she treated like it was a, like a stripper pole. And I was like, I walked up, I was like. And I guess. And then be, right behind where she was doing it, the older folks was just sitting there, like all in their chairs, just like, mm, -hmm, like, mm, -hmm, we it's told them you, again. yeah, it's them. organized crime syndicate. Yeah, <laughs> as I said, it's like, oh, no, I said, you gotta get down, you know, you gotta get down, yeah. What and if he what? doesn't, ha if he can't get it, I'm the, I'm the, you're the security guard. Yeah. I'm the second one that goes, yeah. and once I, once I go, it's all done. It's, the party's over. Yeah, That's I'll cute. shut it down. What about externally outside of your group? When you guys go out to the parade, do you guys ever get beef with other teams? Like, oh yeah, I'm better than you guys, and then no, you guys get into altercations? We never had that problem because uh -uh. we supported every team out there. We supported North Star. Mm -hmm. We supported Numia Pug. We supported um, Jerky. What was it? Um, Superior Beef Superior Beef Jerky. We supported them when they had a team. <laughs> There's a lot of teams. We supported uh, DFW. You remember the origin, way back, DF, down for whatever. Back when that was back when we were younger. You know, that's our other friends that had it. But then everybody grew up and didn't want to do it no more. But then it was more of the way they did the group. It was more. It was more everybody. It wasn't more about culture related. It was just a float, having fun out there. Right. So I, I could I could say I could probably say that I supported every single team out there in Saginaw. Yeah, because I you, I could go in my closet right now and pull you out every team shirt and say that, oh, I didn't support this team. Sometimes I see that a lot of people didn't come support me when I did it for the past decade. They always jump to different teams or stay to the same team. And then to me, it's like, don't have the nerve to come tell me I don't support my community. I've been to all these teams. I got the shirts for proof and I wear it around, you know? It's like same thing with like loud merch brands. I, when one year I went, I went in the temple. I said I'm gonna buy every single shirt. I had a big old bag. I just let me get one, let me get one, let me get. One. I, I went to every single booth because I was just feeling great. You know, I had like what a thousand dollars on me. <laughs> I said, what's these? You know, twenty dollar, thirty dollar shirts. It ain't gonna break the bank. It's helping the community. Yeah, right. I grabbed a shirt from this merch, this merch. I was like, hey, you, let me get your shirt too. Walk up, let me get your shirt. But I'm sorry for whoever I didn't get a chance to support because it's, you know, so, so many things going on. You can't right. buy everything in the world. But that was my way of showing every single vendor, vendor is there that. Uh, Do you, does, does John Boy, I mean, does John Boy have ops? 
the ops. Yeah. Well, that's it. I don't have no ops now. It just. I, Come I on, John. Everybody has ops. No, it's just. Uh, I try to be more mature and be grown up. If I do have people that don't like me, I just ignore it. I mean, you, you, you can just type me the name and then I'll keep it a secret. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I I, I'm, out, I'm out of age group. I try to. T- I, I got friends that, you know, yeah, that has that. And just being affiliated is going to make me, you know, guilty by association, whatever to say. But I try to ignore that and be more focused on what I'm about. What about Low Nations? Do uh, they have ops? Low Nation? Well, I, I can't speak for them. I know some of my friends, oh, I don't like this guy, that guy, but I can't speak for another man. Let them be, you know. But you don't take your uh, organized crime syndicate group no. to go and hop on somebody else? Never? Uh, well, I want to support it. Support it. Yeah. But I never ever took my whole crowd, crowd yeah. away because yeah. I, I remember Superior Jerky, we had our banners. We were just walking around New Year's with mm-hmm. our banners, though, with our flag banner. Yeah. But then we were on a float. We bought the shirt and everything. We hopped on. Yeah. And then some, I, I overheard some stuff like, oh, was that Loud Nation float? This and that. They're like, and I just let it go. I said, no, we were on the float. We already bought the shirt. We just wanted to represent a call out, Loud Nation. Yeah. I was like, was that wrong with me? It wasn't my business. It wasn't me going up on there, you know, having my gang, whatever thing up there is Loud Nation on the banner. So you can get mad at me repping Loud Nation at Loud New Year. I was like, and everybody having a Loud shirt on? I'm like, man, let's, let's make sense here, you know? John, I want to, you know, I want to ask you this. Has there been any females that have made advancements towards you? Advancement. In other words, hit on you. I mean, I mean, he's a good-looking guy. Oh, I, right? I, I just laugh and I walk off because majority of the time I'm with my wife or she be sitting there, so I try to respect her and I just laugh. Yeah, you know, we human beings. I'll flirt back a little bit, hey, this and that, and then gone. I had that incident. We went to a, was it uh my birthday, right? Mm-hmm. Somebody came from out of town. One of our mutual friends and I'm just my sister's like this. You know, she she's real flirty. She's like this with me like hugging me this and that and then this guy was just eyeing her and then he's all like who's that who's that so i looked and i said well what who's that it just made me feel gross like when someone <laughs> said who's i said that's my sister, that's my sister. yeah I'm like Dude. Oh, and then and then i walked off right and the next thing he's sitting there trying to you know hit on her this and that and i'm like dude get I, i'm 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 what do you call it um you know what do you call it <laughs> <laughs> what about you karen do you ever get jealous i mean I mean, your man, he's up there. I mean, he's, you know, the Lao Nation leader. Do you, do you ever get jealous when he's, when other girls are trying to twerk on him? No. She, she say that she sees it, she's like, uh, <laughs> I seen that. I, 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 I don't have to hear I it. I see it. Yeah. It's, it's, no, no, but then she sees it herself. Because at the end of the day, I know he's coming over with me. Yeah, because we'll, it's like one time when we had a party and then some lady, old lady just came in. We had a little, what is it? Family it's, get together. It's like a little cooler. Yeah, yeah. A little itty bitty cooler. It's just on me to sit there. I'm just sitting there eating, you know. Yeah. This lady, out of, it's about the size of that little desk with her. Oh she God. came and sat like scoot over I'm like I looked at her I said you want this chair well I got up I said you can have it and then she just sat there looking at me and I looked at Karen Karen started laughing like and she then, was a cougar she well, wanted because, to because she didn't know that you guys were together yeah and then they're tired like they thought, like Ew, look, Karen. I was like, what the heck? I was like, what the heck was that all about? I was like, the cooler is this small. Oh, and she just wanted to like, almost sat on my lap and I just like scoot up and I just looked like, really? Like, you want to sit down? Are you going to have the whole cooler? It's just awkward. And I get that a lot during New Year's. I'll have people twerk me, this and that. And then, you know, I, I don't want to be rude. Right. You know, I just, you know, dance and walk off to, you know, somewhere else. I mean, you're so lucky to have Karen that's so supportive, so understanding. Yeah. And I don't know what goes behind closed door, but she seems very um, mature. You guys are usually doing the parade in Saginaw. Have you guys done parade in other cities like Murfreesboro, Tennessee, or um, New Iberia, Louisiana, or even San Diego, California? We do rock wall too in rock Texas. Wall? Okay. Yeah, we do walk wall. That's our main temple down the street from the house. We do that. Okay. And then we have a team out in Murfreesboro, do that. And then we had talks about branching out, doing other cities, but it then... It collides with... It collides with their team oh. theme. And the re- that's the reason why it's my choice, the reason why I don't want to do it, because mm-hmm. I can't really put my whole vision into doing it out there because it's their team and they're going to want their way, their color. So I just didn't want to interfere out of respect. Mm-hmm. I, I told him we just go out there and sell our merch, and we just put our banner mm-hmm. on your float, 
and we just join you guys, make it easier. Because, yeah. You guys are expertise in doing floats and, you know, for the Lao New Year. What type of recommendations that you guys have for people, for example, like me or other people that are interested in starting a float? Budget. Budget. Bu budget is a big thing. Make sure you have a truck. Yeah. Budget. Truck. <laughs> Make sure yes. you have a truck that could that haul because we had a hard, we drove everybody drive or like a regular SUV sedan that's the biggest thing because you're gonna have to you need a float and then your float is just my recommendation is it depends it's better to start out small like an average size because they got different sizes of trailers you go super big but when you first start out you don't want to go super big because you got to gain people the community's trust trust and yeah. so if I were to start a float. What month would I start planning? What, what's well, your recommendations? How many, how many people are going to help you? You got to ask yourself that. So yeah. we need to think about how many people. Yeah, yeah people that volunteer and to, then to build it with yeah. you. You need a builder too, someone that's real good with woodwork. Yeah, that and um, people that want to volunteer their time because you have friends that I don't get paid for this. I don't, don't want to do you that. You know, it's just you need a lot of that support. A lot of support system. Yeah. And the woods ain't cheap. <laughs> Tell you. Yeah. It might look cheap, but man, when we built uh, our floor that one year, we went through almost, man, burned through like almost like what, two, three thousand dollars. Just for what? It's like building a house. Because we cut it. Because we're not, we're not builders. So yeah. we just we wasted a lot of woods. We wasted a lot of. Because we were learning. We were learning what works and what doesn't nail. work. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like cutting this wood this way, yeah. cutting this wood that way, and then. Then after that, we had to test the product, yeah. right? Because you don't want anybody getting on your stuff and you fall Breaking, through. and then towing wise. And it, it was a lot of stuff that came with it. It was a headache. What's the price tag? Oh, man. when we Usually. Let's I mean, how much did you guys start off at the beginning, at the, the first few years? Um, just, you know I mean? You can just, if you're comfortable with giving, you don't have to give the exact number, but an estimate. The estimate, first year? Probably like 20000 mm -hmm. Be a comfortable number to start out with because the sound system you gonna need that unless you rent mm -hmm. we didn't want this the way we went was we bought everything ourselves we didn't want to rent anything you could go a cheaper method if you rent but and then if you can do this for years it it adds up renting renting every year you, and but if you rent you, you gotta can't, remember you can't do much. if you damages yeah so you gotta pay you, for it right you rent equipment is dealing with number of water you can have to pay pretty much if anything happens you end up paying for their equipment right if you have somebody came out or a band or unless people that know a band that would volunteer their time it, it got to the point where we uh, we never had that right mm -hmm. we just we didn't want to depend on anybody like I, how I said like when we first started we didn't want any help we just spearheaded everything like this we just like oh what is the floating oh we get yeah. speakers it, because trailer. Uh, we, we became that way i became that way because when i first started i asked for a lot of help from a lot of people yeah and everywhere it was no i was like hey can you guys play your band on my float no could i borrow your trailer no could you tow for me no the it, first year right the, yeah everything was a no 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 i'm no, no. surprised my my father was the only one that yeah, her, her dad was build the, it for her, us. her dad was the first one that built our first float for us what the division that i had because we had a uh, boom box and then we just put it all together he stayed up day to night right yeah. trying to get it for us and, and then he just made us paint it yeah what do you guys think about the future the future that holds law nation <clears throat> what do you guys see in the, the vision the the future is like how next year is our ten year right then we try ten to, years we just want to take a break and watch another team step up in our slot and or another member to yeah take or yeah our that's slot. that's our plan too we like maybe because they don't see the hard work that we put in they always oh like what do you guys somebody actually told me and her what are you guys doing it's like we're the one that provide the float got the sponsors the money the, the, the money to you know buy the the beer the food the sound system and you can still ask us what are we two doing it's like you own a business and one of your workers comes screaming at you sit you sitting in your office what are you doing i expect you guys come together and help each other to make this happen it's just be just putting up a couple banners what's so hard about it do you guys ever consider in the future as far as making an established committee board member like who's in charge of what we, we, but we, we were gonna step down and have like probably have to end up getting a board member to yeah. have the next 
person to that go keep, for. keeps it going on because yeah, I know we, yeah. I know we're getting older too so we can't because it, it gets old afterwards doing the same stuff every year every year but if, if your passion is in it your passion is in it but with the party stuff like that with the flow it's we want somebody else to experience it like, I mean, 10 years is a lot, yeah. it's a long time. Putting all of that hard work and your energy into Lao Nation, I mean, I, I feel for you. I feel sad hearing that you guys are going to step down, but it's also good for the younger kids because you're not going to be here. Yeah. You know, maybe it, like another 40, 50 years, maybe? Yeah. We were stepping down, and the word term stepping down is we want another team member. To take over. To step up. To, let's see, we will still be the backbone of it. And just kind of support them and guide yeah, them. Yeah, and guide them, them. To, to, you know, have, you know, see what their vision is. Mm -hmm. And you could have, but then we would still be there to tone them down if it goes. Is, of course. You know, I mean, the younger, the younger kids, they have, like, fresher ideas. Yeah. You know, they have more ideas. I mean, the younger generations, they're considered, like, our future, right? Mm -hmm. What about um, your preparation these next several weeks? Oh man, it's crunch time. It's, what is it like? It's, 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 she tell me, she be sleeping, she be telling me, stop, stop. And I'll be just sitting there, blah, 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 like, just stuff like, I'm like, oh, I gotta get this. He'll be running like out of nowhere in the middle of the night, babe, did I get it done yet? I'm like, I just be I on the computer, you. like, I'm just, I I'm just looking at stuff like, uh, I wanna make sure we get this in time. Uh, and I know you guys mentioned that Dragon Ball Z is your theme and you kind of gave us the the behind the theory and then and then your ideas and creativity on that where can we get these t-shirts and and by the way shout out to uh tay tay come come to Rana con did i say that right please uh, dm me and let me know uh, i don't I, I don't know if i yeah. said your last name wrong but i'm trying to come to Rana con Sounds Lao, right? Yeah. Yeah. But um, shout out to him for his talents in creating the uh, Lao Nation uh, t-shirts. So where can we get these uh, t-shirts? Uh, we should be having it pretty soon before Walk Wall Temple. We won't be able to hit them or market what for Kimbo. Mm -mm. We just have a regular merch out there. But in between, when they get close to Walk Wall Weekend, that's our goal to have it before or a day right <laughs> or else we won't have shirts for yeah. afraid. no uh, we always have that you know issue last minute stuff because there's a lot of shirts mm -hmm. and you know the, the printer doing their best to get our stuff out so I, i'm not going to rush them i want you know the shirts to look nice for right, everybody right. Yeah. because our parade shirt is not just for parade the the way it's he's designed it it's more like you can wear it for a long time you don't yeah. have to wear it for just parade. We, 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 yeah, we try not to cheap out on our fabric because, you know, in the past we joined a lot of, you know, other teams and they'll just go for the lowest quality shirts and it'll, I'll feel like I'm wearing a trash bag walking around or yeah. when I wash it, it'd be so hard, you know, and then yeah. I'm, I'm like, you know what, let's make the shirt. If, if so, it's something that I want to wear, I want to make. That's right. my mindset. And then P was like, why are you putting so much money and effort into the de design? And the shirt quality, I said, no, it just, if, if I won't wear it, you know, I won't make it. I'm so excited about your 10th year anniversary and, you know, and just but excited to see year. you next year. And then after that, the 11th year, so I'm excited to see who's going to take over if, take if over, they have yeah. enough yeah. energy. Like or if race. people persuade us enough to do it again, we'll probably end up doing it again. Yeah, and, and, no, and no, it, I don't think yeah. so. <laughs> <laughs> it's just tired. Karen is tired, so we have to give you guys a break. Yeah. Someone else will have to be yeah. like the boss. Yeah. Yes, yes, definitely. Well, guys, I hate to do this to you. You guys know that I'm with Peacock Society 42, and I go around asking people a lot of trivia questions. Yeah. I have to ask these questions. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. I don't know who wants. You want to take the first question? Uh, I'll, I'll take the first one. Okay. All right. Are you, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Name three major cities, three major cities in Laos. All right, I'll go with one. Everybody knows. Okay, hold on a second. Because we, we need to figure out how no, long are you. Let me do that. Let me do that. You, you do it. Okay. No, I'm just ahead. kidding. All right. <laughs> okay, so name three major cities in Laos that starts with the letter P. P? Three major cities? Three major cities. Man, that's hard. <laughs> Phuket? No, that's Thailand. <laughs> no. Oh, man, I got it. Man, let's see. They got to uh, Hold on, let me... I gotta put a thingy cap on. P. Three major city. P. Come on, I don't know. I don't know how to blink. I know I looked 
at the map before, and I seen a few cities with a P. I, I don't um, know. Boxe. Boxe. Yeah, what? got it. But uh, Boxe is <laughs> <Right>. all right. <laughs> Punbury. <laughs> P, I know Boxe, um, another P. Uh, man, it's hard. I bet you once I'd be in a car, I'd be like, man, I, wanna, I, I knew that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I gave up on that I, part. I, I can't, I can't yeah. give you a certificate because you have to be certified Kun Lao. So yeah. you're probably like a quarter, so I'm going to have to. Yeah. P, so it's um, Boxe, Pong Sali, or um, Pak, Pak Song. Yeah. Yeah. So Pak San. We, we're Lao Americans. We're Lao Americans. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, sis, are you ready? No. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> I'm gonna give you guys a hint. So th I don't know if you guys seen the videos yeah. from last year. Yeah. But yeah. shout out to Darni and her husband Joseph <laughs> for uh, attempting uh, this question. They got four out of five. So the question <laughs> is, name five countries that share its border with Laos. I got Burma. Burma. Cambodia. Cambodia. Vietnam. Vietnam. Thailand. Thailand. One and more. I know there's one more country on top. It's on top. It's Yunnan, Hunan. I don't know. What's that? It's Malaysia? No? <laughs> Bur Burma? No. Well, what did I name already? Um, Thailand. 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 Cambodia. <laughs> Vietnam. Uh, Burma. It's one more country. You said five, right? Yeah. China. China. Correct. Yeah. Yes. They are they're really Kun Lao. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh I was like, how, how did I forget China? <laughs> no, it's like the biggest country. Yeah. 